So public void, get random local business. Here, what's the behavior? Well, this has ended up being almost a smell in the sense that really uh, this deal helper is wrapping a call to our random helper and the only behavior it really has is that's passing some local businesses uh, which again are essentially global they're just coming from some static local businesses list or um, hash set in this case and it's just proxying a request out to that random helper uh, so this is almost a middleman smell where wherever we're using get random local business we could essentially actually just directly invoke our random helper um, so the only type of assertion we can really make here that sort of makes any sense is that our get random local business method actually uh, just invokes a get random value from list. So I would say that generally this here itself is a smell and wherever get random local business is used, we're just going to invoke our random helper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where this is used, which is in our Middleton order processor. And the question you just have to ask here is, is it the deal services responsibility to get a random local business? And in this case, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say that the random business, which we're calling biz here, I suppose, not the greatest name, so we can change that as well, would just be random helper dot get random value from list. And in fact, it's just the, it's just this. And so we'll create the backing field for it. And now we're gonna move get random local business out of the deal service. The deal services responsibility is now just to generate a deal. So we'll go into ideal service, get random local business is no longer part of its public interface. And so now once again in our factory, Our Middleton order processor now takes a random helper that we can create our backing field for. And so now that's happy. So you can see that sometimes you refactor and you start to see uh, methods which are just essentially proxies to other uh, to other classes and then you start to see like where does this behavior apparently want to belong if all I was doing before was newing up some service or invoking some service call from another location well just put the behavior in that location I would say and the more you do this the more you start to often see where the behavior sort of wants to belong is the way I look at it and um, sometimes you end up with bloated services that way and then within that service you see okay there are some patterns here that suggest that we should break this service down into two or three other services or uh, sometimes the service just sort of empties itself out and you realize that that service didn't really have any unique behavior of its own um, so some interesting things like that happen um, but i think you just sort of have to go with the process and um, and in a certain sense um, sort of trust where the process is taking you, but do it discerningly so that um, you know, you're sort of controlling these, uh, these sort of architectural decisions about the way that you've organized your code. All right, so if we're gonna test the deal service now, the only thing to test in it in terms of a method is that uh, when we generate a deal, if the date time is the afternoon, then we're returning a PM rate, otherwise we're returning AM rate. So we can say that for the deal service, given morning date time, generate deal returns AM rate. You can see where this is going. As always, we have our arrange act and assert. And like I said, you don't have to put these out in comments unless it helps you. Quite frankly, I've written a lot of tests and um, I, I, and sometimes it still it just helps me think. So I put that out. I put it out there, especially when I'm talking <laughs> talking through it on a on a YouTube video like this. Um, let's go to tests, test deal service. Sorry, I lost it there for a moment. So we're going to arrange. So we have a new deal service. 
It no longer uses the random helper for anything, so it has no dependencies. And we can remove its constructor again. So we have a deal service, and then we have some morning time, which is a new daytime. So we'll say it's 2020. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> so it's 10 in the morning on October 10th, uh, 2020. It's 10, 10 in the morning in 10 seconds. So what we should act now, we can say sut.generate deal for the morning time. We'll get the result. We should say our expected result is equal to 0.05m. Now here we're tightly coupling actually our test to the particular value that deal service has and deal service isn't configured to have this value it's actually just hard coded in deal service so we can either make an assertion that it's always 0.05 um, if that's the spec if the spec is that it generate it returns 0.05 which in which case we um, might say 0.05 here um, but if we want to actually make an assertion that it's returning the AM rate, then we need to trust our uh, type here. And so what I would say is that, um, well, I would say that if AM rate was uh, configurable, then we could have access to it and we could pull that um, and then just make an assertion about that. Uh, this is a little bit of splitting hairs here. We're going to create the expected result to be 0.05m, but note that we're tightly coupling that value to uh, what the deal service is declaring here because we know what the deal service says. So if this were to change, then it would break our test. And since our test is saying that it's returning the AM rate, that would be confusing for someone. So we're going to say it returns 0.05. The other alternative here is we could make these properties and then we could essentially make them getters that we assign values to and then our test could actually say that it returns the AM rate in which case we'd say the expected result is the SUT.AM rate. So this is basically like get return um, that value. Uh, when it's an expression like this, it's going to evaluate every time it's read. So it's, it's, it's a function. This could also be static now. There's a number of different ways we could do this. I think this is okay for now. Assuming it's the responsibility of our deal service to be able to report on what the PM and AM rates are, then that's probably fine. So what we could do now is assert result.should.be expected result. And if we want to make this a little more expressive, we could say that this is AM rate. And we could say deal, uh, deal generated, or rather generated deal rate is the generate deal. And the generated deal rate should be the AM rate in this case. Likewise, we could write one for PM. So we could say giving evening daytime returns the PM rate. And so we have October 10th and here let's just make it 8 o'clock, 8, 10 and 10 seconds I should say. And we're, we'll use the PM rate here. And this is no longer morning time. So we're generating a deal for the afternoon time. The generated deal rate should be the PM rate. So we can run our tests. OK, and those tests are passing. So now if we run all the tests from the terminal, I think it runs them in quiet mode by default, which is fine. And so, yeah, all four tests pass. And so let's write 
a few more tests here just to get some practice in. What should we test here? Helpers. These are pretty trivial to test. And in fact, um, yeah, that would be pretty boring to test, but we could essentially test that the types uh, return, the expressions return their values appropriately. Our advert printer. So here this is a case where we've got a Boolean value um, passed to our print method that, that essentially just branches inside of the method. So the easiest thing to do here for something that the logic is this simple for, I would say, is not to go all out and uh, and do the and, and implement like a polymorphic uh, solution to this where we have different printers, we have the custom printer and the default printer and all of that. Um, when the logic is this simple, the first thing I would do honestly is just have a print default method that takes the advert. And then I would have a print custom. And then we'll move the default here. And we'll move the custom here. And you might say there is a bit of code duplication here. They're both calling system dot threading dot thread dot sleep for three seconds, and that's true. But I think a little bit of duplication here. I keep I keep uh, I keep mentioning Sandy Mitch. She's got a lot of good quotes. She often says the, that a little bit of duplication is less bad than the wrong abstraction. And I don't think we're at, at the we, we're not really risking having the wrong abstraction here. We're essentially just saying that there's a small penalty to pay here, a minimal penalty to pay here for for one line of duplication essentially, or two lines of essentially duplicate code here um, for uh, this simple behavior. We're not going to go through the exercise of uh, extracting individual objects for each of these, although it wouldn't be, I would say, uh, totally ill-advised. So our iAdvert printer now has a print default and print custom. And we don't have the Boolean check. The other thing that, about the Boolean parameters being a smell is that if you see print somewhere and then you see like some value comma true, you always have to go investigate like what's happening. And a lot of times it's not even as clear as it is when the method's really simple like this exactly what's happening um, and then and automatically you have two branches in that method if you have three or let's say you have two boolean parameters then it's always going to increase exponentially you're always going to have four branches of logic assuming that all the parameters are used you have three then you've got eight and then it just expands exponentially from there so keep those parameter lists small and I would say keep the booleans out of them as much as possible. So now we know that whatever we were using with I, with the advert printer behavior before is broken. We can .NET build and this is actually just going to show us immediately where it's broken. So we got a bunch of errors here um, because we're saying print 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 everywhere um, and this is happening in our various order processors. So let's go into our order processors. False was the case when we uh, were printing a, I believe that was custom. We can come back and take a look here. Uh, uh, okay, so bool was is default advert. So for false, we were doing custom. And then in county, this is print custom. Downtown, this is printing default. And this one is printing custom. Notice that our downtown processor could make use of our daytime uh, resolver, so we can do that. Okay, so let's go into our downtown. So this is saying if it's Saturday or Sunday, and in common parlance I would say that that's the weekend. So what we can do is we can go to our daytime resolver, 
create is it the weekend and here we're going to return daytime dot now that day of week and we can actually do some link here to say that all right, here I'm going to do this uh, like this. We're going to say var weekend days is equal to a new list of date times. Actually, it's a new list of day of weeks, which is day of week dot Saturday, day of week dot Sunday. And now what we'll say is we'll return weekend days dot contains daytime dot now dot day of week. Okay. So now in the downtown order processor we can say if daytime resolver we'll bring that in. Create our backing field. And this reminds me, we need to update the interface now. Well, is it the weekend? And we go back to our daytime resolver to make sure that that's the case. That is the one that we want. So we can say daytime resolver, is it the weekend? Then we use the default printer here.